Yes, you and it's time to start cashing in that retirement annuity. All right, uh, but it is that time of a Wednesday. <laughs> it's hashtag my money story. And of course, it's that part of the week where we sit down with a celebrity or somebody very well known and we find out about their relationship with money, their losses, their gains throughout life and perhaps learn from them because we all live the same life experience together and we can perhaps learn from each other. And this morning, we take our financial magnifying glass and we pour it over a young lady who is somebody who breathes and lives youth empowerment as a presenter on South Africa's most most loved youth television show, Hectic 99, and also the co-founder of The Dream Factory. I'm talking about none other than Lorianne Norkia, a.k.a. Lorizi hey. in the house. Thank you Amazing. for the love. I'm feeling the love oh, and the love. We're all about that. We are all about that. And of course, we also have our certified financial planner, Mr. Grant Fancel, in the house. Thank you for joining us. Oh, and welcome to the show, both of you. Thank um, you. Lorian, how we usually start this is we ask you a very, very simple question about your earliest memory of money. Oh, wow. I think my earliest memory of money has to be with my dad. Um, he was always on that saving tip. And back in the day, I don't know if you remember the old one rand coin, the old five rand coin. Yo, yeah. fam, I don't even know which president was on that coin at that specific time. It was, it was a springbok at the one in Paul under that. Kruger, you know, back in the day. And like, he always used to be like, yo, man, you have to save everything that you have. And he created different types of money boxes for me just to like save. And then I upgraded to paper money oh, as wow. we went around. But Upgrade. I you oh, know, lovely, I always eh? just remember putting things into a savings, uh, you know, tin, a piggy bank, something along those lines. So that's my earliest memory of money. Mm. Did that money ever do anything for you that you were putting away in all those different money boxes or bottles? You know, I think like we had plans for that money. Sometimes we, we'd use it uh, for a project that I had at school, something that I wanted to, um, you know, give the money towards, whether it be a charity or whether it be something for my personal um, uh, academics, education. But sometimes I just think, you know, you know, just a young one, you know, you know, you know just something happened, yes, <laughs> as well, so there's that. Oh, All right, uh, what would you say is, is, is the toughest financial lesson that you've had to learn so far in your life? The very thing that I was just talking to you about right now, saving. Um, you know, Kat, working in the media industry, you can work with large amounts of money yeah. at one time. It's mm -hmm. not really mm -hmm. spread across evenly, you know. And when you get that money, you actually have to be wise enough to learn how to actually, you know, save, how to make that money grow, what are you going to do with that money. So I feel that because um, being in the media, there's that whole limelight and flashy, mm -hmm. red carpet, glamorous, mm -hmm. people just tend to want to spend money really, really fast. So I think <laughs> the savings element has been very, you know, it's been her. Yeah, yeah. And now it's her. So yeah. I would assume. I mean, t you started working very early. Um, do you know that yeah. Lorianne worked? You worked at Woolies, right? I worked at Woolies actually. Oh, wow. And this is in matric. What, what were you doing? Were you packing racks? At Woolworths, they actually taught us something very, very important: multitasking. I think oh, yeah? that's where I actually learned. You hear and you pack and you greet and you make the customer feel welcome. <laughs> wait, so there's so wait, many wait, things okay, wait, 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 wait. Give me, give me your best uh, customer service right now. So I'm rocking up. I've got a box of cereal and toilet paper. Here I go. <laughs> Just a disclaimer, this is not my life and my future. Now, and you know, it's oh, no, no golly, disrespect God. to anyone, but I, you know, I had to upgrade from that moment. Oh, um, oh wow, I mean, it's you, Katlejo, from Expresso SVC3, nominated for Best Presenter oh, wow. for a Safter. You're looking sure. good. I'm absolutely loving the navy. Well, sir, um, oh, wow, this is a great purchase. I see you've got the uh, low mm. oil uh, free a tuna right over here, that's going to do good. Sorry, that, that's not mine. I only got the cereal and the tissue. That's um, not mine. Well, sir, you know Sorry, what? I've got to go. I've got to go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> You're such a nasty customer. Oh, that was brilliant service, though. That was brilliant service. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we will continue with hashtag my money story. Oh, Marizi is still here. Grant Van Sale is here. And we'll see where the grant can, uh, of course, disseminate some information and some advice regarding one of the toughest financial lessons that Lorianne is still struggling with. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. <laughs> All right, yes, we are back with Lorianne Norkia, aka Lorizian. Also, yes, SAFTA <laughs> nominated Lorizzi. presenter and all round Can I give you a great high five girl. For that, though? Hey, no, Same listen, category, you, you're doing absolutely fantastic. <laughs> and we're learning about Lorizzi's money story. And she says that, you know, early on when we spoke, that one of the biggest things she struggled with is saving and how to develop a culture of saving in yeah. and around her finances. And perhaps, Grant, this is where you can weigh in and um, see where we can help Lorianne. Yeah, I think I think uh, I think what your struggle is. I think most people struggle with that, mm -hmm. and it really boils down to proper planning. 
right? Mm -hmm. and, and being intentional with that planning. Because at the end of the day, we all want to save money, but we don't become intentional about it. So hmm. the very first place to start is to start with what we call a prioritized budget. The first expense lines you want to have is your savings. Mm -hmm. So what can you save on a monthly basis to continue a lifestyle that you're happy with? Once you've got that done, you're going to set up an investment, and we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail. But then it goes off your bank account, and it's gone. The money's gone. Then there's nothing you can do about it. So you can't go and It's like a monthly expenditure. It's Just out of as it. your, your it's cell phone Take it out of the way, yeah. It's Take part it of your lifestyle. Way. So what is that, that quote? Out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. So out of mind, out of sight. Out of I'm mind. Sad. One of the two, yeah. <laughs> so basically what you're wanting to do is you wanted to get the, the money out of your mind yeah. or out, and out of sight so that you actually don't need to worry about it until you're wanting to achieve a goal that mm -hmm. that money is supposed to achieve. Yeah. Um, what, what I find with a lot of people is they go and they go through their month and they say, you know what, I've got 500 bucks left for the month. I'm going to save this. And there's no planning and there's mm -hmm. no priority on your savings. So at the end of the day, if we don't plan properly for anything, we're not going to really achieve much, are mm -hmm. we? So when it comes to the savings side of things, obviously we need to plan properly, prioritize it. When it comes to the investment sides, you want to take advantage of compounded interest. And mm -hmm. Kat will talk to us a little bit more about that in a bit. But the faster you get started with that, the quicker you're going to get your money to work for you mm -hmm. instead of you working for money. Yeah. Now, that is the secret to investments, yeah. is being disciplined enough to start as early as possible. You're still beautiful and young, so you can still take uh, the rest of your life to start building this, uh, this investment strategy up. But the longer you leave it, the more the money is going to start working for you in the long run instead yeah. of uh, you now having to run around like a headless chicken trying to figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, from an investment perspective, you should only really have two investments uh, from a monetary perspective. So the first one would be something for retirement because mm -hmm. retirement is a completely separate goal, right? Yeah. You all need to retire one day. Mm -hmm. And there's very simple retirement vehicles. Uh, you want to make sure that that retirement vehicle is a fee-based one, not commission-based, so that you're getting the lowest possible rates okay. and you're not getting charged extra. The second one would be something like a unit trust or a, a investment that has liquidity, so you can access it. Uh -huh. And that investment will be something that you'll set up to achieve goals. I want to go skiing with Kat in two years' time. <laughs> I now need to start saving money on a monthly basis to go and ski with him. So that goes straight into that investment, goes off my budget, don't even know about it anymore. And in two years' time, I've got the bucks to go ski with Kat. Mm -hmm. so, so that's basically the two really good investments that you need. What a lot of people do is they say, I'm going to take out a retirement plan here and a retirement plan there and all that. But you don't need to do that anymore because these investments are so good you can diversify within it because mm -hmm. you don't want all your eggs in one basket, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you don't need to open up different accounts all over the show. So that's pretty much, I would say those are your, your just summarize quick, uh, basically plan, mm -hmm. prioritize your budget and set up the two investments. And all then right. you're good to go. Get compound interest going in your life. And there you go. And Lauren, if you're wondering, yes, you are welcome to come skiing with me. Yes, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> now listen, um, we are all about creating a culture of savings. So you'll remember that we tasked you with getting your hands on a chessboard, something like this, or even making your own at home. And join us in the Expresso Savings Challenge where mm. we double the amount of money that we save every week. And we started off with 10 cents, doubling it to 20, then 40, then 80. And uh, that was last week. So mm -hmm. if you've carried on right now, you should be at one rand 60 this week and now we're going to carry on and then as we carry on with this challenge this expressive savings challenge you're going to see the magic of compounding that the further on you go how much money you're actually able to save if you commit to a simple thing like mm -hmm. doubling your savings every week and we're talking about being able to be disciplined enough to take a certain portion of your money every month mm -hmm. and investing it in your savings but we're going to be talking to Lorianne a bit more again including all of her successes in her tv career so stay tuned to your feel good breakfast show